Welcome to Awake to Oneness Radio. I am Caroline Chang, your host. The mission of Awake to Oneness Radio is to inspire the world to awaken to the universal truth of oneness. Science is now teaching us that everything is energy and that energy is interconnected and interdependent. That energy is one thing. Now science is just now teaching us the truth of oneness, but spirituality and ancient wisdom has been teaching the truth of oneness for eons. So now science is just catching up, but this is not even new science. The science of quantum physics that talks about the unified field and uh, quantum entanglement, which all basically is saying that we're all one, that science is over a hundred years old. So once, when, when you do something to another person and you understand that you're really doing it to another aspect of yourself, when mankind awakens to this truth of oneness, there will be peace on earth. Today's show topic is Reality of Truth with Mike Zappi Zeppelin. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Zeppi, how do you like, yeah. what would you like I to call like, you? I like when people call me Zappi because there's Zappy. so many mics out there that it's just confusing. So okay, Zappi. Zappi feels good. And I like Zappy. I like Zappy. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for having me on. I, I love your, you know, your the energy that you're putting out. And I think from a topic standpoint, this is the only thing to be talking about. You know, everything else is sort of surface level. Exactly. And, um, so yes. thank you. Yes. And I'm driving around in a car, so that's but that's, that's typical okay. for me. So hey. I'm the passenger today. That that's fine. That oh, thank you so much for being my guest. I I loved your documentary, The Reality of Truth. That is just I actually did a show, a webinar years ago called the um the nature of the reality, the nature of the true reality. So this mm. is very much in line with that um, webinar I did many years ago. So this wow. is amazing. But you have the documentary, The Reality of Truth. I want my audience to check it out. I know it's on, what's, it's on Netflix. It's, uh, uh, no, it, it's actually, we, we put it on YouTube. So okay. anyone can see it on YouTube. Awesome. It's on Amazon Prime. Okay. And if people have the Gaia TV, it's also on Gaia. So. I think that's where I saw it recently on Gaia. I think I originally saw it on YouTube a year ago, and then I yep. watched it again, and I think I, I saw I have Gaia now. So I, I watched it on Gaia. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. We had a lot of fun making the movie. I mean, you know, like what you were just saying when I was listening to your intro, and I thought, you know, everybody – intellectually when they hear what you're saying they kind of go well yeah i think that makes sense but you know when you have that direct experience of going inside your own self and whether that's you know through some kind of a catalyst like in the movie the reality of truth michelle rodriguez myself and some of our friends we went down to peru yes. sat with a shaman uh drank ayahuasca drank san pedro at the top of a mountain and had these experiences and you know, it's kind of like they say, like, you know, if you want to explain to somebody, you know, what chocolate tastes like, yes. you know, you could spend a year trying to explain that and they still wouldn't get well, it. Exactly. Um, you got to exactly. taste it and then it's, you're going to have the, then you can talk about it. Exactly. So, this is so true. This is true. Yeah, and, and that's why and, we came, we came here to experience the taste yes. of chocolate. We came here to experience life. And if we don't, we need that personal experience to really get it. So, yes. yes. That's yes. the miracle. We're walking around in these virtual reality suits, suits and we get to experience, you know, love and, and intimacy and chocolate and a strawberry and jumping out of an airplane. It's like all of these things are, you know, they're just, you can't have those experiences if you don't have a physical vessel. And, exactly. Um, exactly. Exactly. And so for me, you know, I, I say it in the reality of truth, but I had, you know, hit my own spiritual midlife crisis where I'd done everything society told me I should do. Yes. And I was having like, I felt happy, but I didn't really feel fulfilled at the deepest level. I didn't understand what I was doing and why I was doing it. Mm -hmm. And I really thought to myself, the only way, I can know this is I'm going to have to go inside myself in a, in a very 
you know, radical way mm-hmm. uh, to have this experience myself. And then hopefully I can share it with other people and, and it right. can be even more, you know, beneficial to me because I'm sharing it. So I'm getting this kind of uh, exponential effect from, from that sharing. Yes. Well, like you said, um, I'm hoping everybody that's listening to this podcast will and watching this podcast will check out your documentary. But if they have not, can you go back to the beginning, go back to how you came to do this wonderful project? Yeah, thank you. Um, Yeah. And what happened was, you know, as I say, I was living this reality where I had gone to school, I had made money, I had started a family. I, all the things society tells you are going to be happiness. And, yes. and and I just wasn't fulfilled. And I had had a couple of very good experiences when I was younger with psychedelics. Okay. And I had, I had this experience when I was young where I had done a psychedelic and I, I looked at my hand and I could see that it was billions of atoms just spinning and vibrating at a wow. certain frequency. Yes. And I was like, I was like, wow, look at that. Those atoms, they're vibrating. And I looked over at my friend Mm -hmm. and he was the same atoms, but he was vibrating at like a slightly different frequency Frequency. than me. Yes. And I thought like, wow. And then I looked at the table and that was the same atoms. And I was like, wow, everything's just frequency. This is the difference in everything is that that slight difference in frequency. Vibration, right. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, everything is energy vibrating at different frequencies, but it's That's the same it. energy, but it vibrates yeah. at different frequencies, yes. That's it. And when yes. I saw it, you know, when I actually saw it, mm-hmm. that's when it changed my life. Yes. And so I could never unsee that. And so yes. when I hit this moment of a midlife crisis, I said, well, I got to go back to that experience and mm-hmm. I got to bring myself back and I had heard about ayahuasca which is okay. a, a tea that you drink yes. that comes from the Amazon uh, yes. rainforest that has been used by shaman for millennia to yes. get in touch with you know themselves and alternate states and yes. so I was invited to do it quite a few times in California and okay. I kept making excuses and I was okay. oh I'm gonna be out of town I, Oh, I think I'm going to the dentist. That I just was avoiding it. I was avoiding it. And finally, you know, just life hit me. And I said, I have to go do this because I can't even move forward in my life until I, I go inside. Yes. And I knew I was going to find some answers and some healing. And yes. so uh, I originally reached out to Deepak Chopra and I yes. said to him, uh, you know, Deepak, I said, I found I now that I'm in this state of that I'm in, I'm finding, I haven't even done any, you know, psychedelic yet, but I'm finding psychedelics. I'm finding meditation in the Bible. I'm finding it in, you know, in books and I'm finding it hidden meaning in things. And I just, I'm so, I feel like I have to do this. And Deepak encouraged me to go do it. And I said, I'm going to go down to the the jungle. I'm going to sit with a shaman. I'll bring some cameras because I know Mm -hmm. how to do that. And I will you know, share this experience. I, I needed it for myself, first yes. of all. Yes. Um, but I, you know, so my friends and I, we reached out to some of our extended network. And one of those people was the actress, Michelle Rodriguez okay. from Fast and Furious. Okay. And she, my, she, you know, we connected immediately on this. She said, I've been knowing I have to do this for a long time. And like the first time I was you know, hanging out, she like basically handed me her passport and said, here, take my passport. You know, okay. we're leaving in two weeks. I was like, all right. You know, I never had anybody give me their passport before, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, wow, this is on, you know? And, yes. uh, you know, I think one of the important things about when you're going to have one of these transformational experiences, you really want to be in the right set and setting. Okay. And that to me means, you know, being with people who are experienced, Mm -hmm. who can guide you and that you're in a safe place and you're, you're just set up to have the best experience possible. Exactly. And that's very important. That's important to be, to be in a safe surrounding with others and like with a a shaman that you know and you trust and that's very important. Yes. Yeah. Very important. And, and so I knew I had set that up for us and our group. Uh And so we, we went down to Peru and you'll see it, you see in the movie, the first thing we did was we hiked to this up to this mountain, 17,000 feet, and yes. we did a plant medicine, a catalyst called Wachuma, 
which mm-hmm. is called, which is known as San Pedro, which okay. is a cactus. Okay. And we drank this cactus. And what it does is it immediately reconnects you to nature in mm. one flash. And a lot of people in society, I think, are, you know, they never put their feet on the grass or in the sand. Yes. They have their feet in their shoes and they step on cement and they just, they're so disconnected from nature, from nature. Yes. It disrupts their whole, you know, balance. Being. Yeah. Yeah. And so the San Pedro puts you into that nature, connects you so deep and you yes. see your place in there and you see that you're all of nature. And mm-hmm. so, you know, that's where we hike down this mountain. There were, you know, a dozen of us and we hiked down the mountain and nobody even lost the step. Nobody slipped one time. It was just uh-huh. like we were so in tune yes. that we were like, we were with nature. We went right down. And in the movie, you see Michelle Rodriguez. She has a 20 years of heavy pain lifted off of her shoulders just because yes. she was able in that moment to release something that she was carrying around for you know yes, decades a long time. Pain. yes and she even says in the movie that she stepped into her femininity which is you know a new thing for her to have that feeling and yes. it was just like so beautiful to see her transition because she's she came in with like you know a, a little bit of a hard edge you mm-hmm. see her do the san pedro and you see she's you know open and she's just yes. vibrating in a nice frequency. Yes. Then the, we, a couple of days later, we had hiked down into the into the rainforest in the jungle, and we sat with a shaman. And uh oh, I think Mike, uh, we might you back. Take we, a line of one land. Okay, Mike, we we you got you we lost you for a second. Um, so just repeat what you just. I said. cut out a sec. Uh, just for oh, you, it, you you froze okay. for a few seconds. Okay, so just repeat what you just said. Yeah. So, all right. So we then hiked down into the rainforest and we we drank a tea called ayahuasca, and that tea is is made by taking the vine of one plant and Mm -hmm. the leaf of another plant and combining them together. And what's really interesting about ayahuasca is if you take that vine and you boil it and you drink it, it has no effect. If you right. take the leaf and you boil it and drink it, no effect. But if you put them together, together. And boil it, you have this ayahuasca. Okay. So it's like, you know, I, I asked the shaman, like, how did they know with all these hundreds of thousands of plants here, which yes. ones to combine? And they say the plants told them which wow. ones. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So. Amazing. It was, uh, it was an incredible experience. I explained some of it in the reality of truth, what happened to me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what, what basically happens is that you're, you're taking all of these filters that you normally have when you're walking around in society, you know, just so right now there's sound waves coming out of my mouth and right. radio waves coming through um, and, and you see them, but right. you just kind of filter it out as not necessary. Right. So, if somebody were to blow a dog whistle, I hear it, but I filter it out as unnecessary. Okay. And so when, when you do the ayahuasca, it takes all these filters off. And okay. now you really see your connection to everything. Exactly. And in that experience, everybody basically describes this as there's a feminine energy, a spirit that's with the ayahuasca. Okay. And some people might say angel, some people might say, you know, this is God that you're connecting with. Uh-huh. Uh-oh, uh, we're, I'm losing you again, Zappy. Um, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, okay. Like you're going, you're going go in and out. <laughs> you're going in and out a little bit. Okay, yeah. let me, uh, all right, let me, I'm, we are driving, so I don't know if that's sure that's some effect here but yeah let me make sure let me go back a little bit okay um and i just i didn't know if you froze or okay I'm so here. in the in the ayahuasca experience everybody describes this uh feminine spirit whether okay. you want to call it mother nature or god they you feel this maternal spirit guiding you through this entire process yes and for me, it was a really powerful thing because, you know, as a, as a male, 
Yeah. Um, you know, I think in society we're trained to think a certain way and we often don't get in touch with the feminine creative aspect of ourselves. Yes. And yes. so I was one of those people. And mm -hmm. when I had this experience, uh, I was presented sitting there and there's a fire truck going by. Oh, of course, okay. anytime you're trying to give out good information, it's going to freeze. There's going to be a fire truck go by. You know? Yes. Uh, we just got hard. out of Mercury ret retrograde. I think yesterday was the last day of Mercury retrograde. Wow. Yeah. All right. so we're just out of it. So actually we planned a good day to record this. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Yes. Um, so yeah. So what was really profound for me, and I say this to some degree in the reality of truth is that I had this realization and I was able to ask a lot of important questions about life and, I was able to experience death. And that's like one of the core components of this ayahuasca and some of these transformational catalysts is that you, when you're shown death and you look at it and you see the afterlife and you, you experience it, when you come back out of it, you're not afraid of death anymore. You're like, wow, that's so dynamic. It's like, I almost can't wait to get there. But yeah. if I'm gonna, you know, manifest myself in this physical vessel, it's you know, I might as well do it for with a lot of intent and, yes. you know, try to do the best I can. But yes. wow, like what I saw was nothing exactly. to be scared of. It was fantastic. And well, um, I, I have said, uh, I, I don't know if I'm the only one. I'm the only one I, I know has never been afraid of death. Death wow. has never, I've never been afraid of death. I've always known from the moment I was born, I always knew that there was a greater reality, that what mm. we were experiencing was not all that there was. And I knew that there was something beyond this was something even more expansive. So I yeah. never, wow. instinctively, I never feared death. So That's amazing. Actually, me personally, I actually feared life more than death. Wow. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. And life isn't, I mean, you know, what I saw, I would say, definitely fear life more than death because <laughs> yes, yes. uh it's that's the real deal yes. so that's amazing that you were tuned into that um i had an experience one of the probably the, i don't say this in the reality of truth i'm happy to say it here but one of the most profound things that happened to me in my ayahuasca experience was i was you know i basically asked you know why bad things happen right. why they happen i was shown that you know, everything in, in, is in perfect balance. And when something happens it's over true. here, it gets made, made up over here. And everything is from, from a certain distance and perspective, it's totally perfect. It's like what we do with our uh, free will that's going to you know, be where things get tricky and, and not tricky is going to was what happens. Yes. But after I had that experience, I was there and I was, you know, it was pretty intense, but I felt this spirit presence with me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I was okay with it. And then the spirit, you know, spoke to me okay. and it basically said, do you, it said, do you know how you're breathing right now? Mm -hmm. And I thought about it and I said, no, I don't no, I don't know how I'm breathing. It said, do you know how you're growing your hair? You're doing it, but do you know how? Yeah. And I was like, no. And then it said, well, then what makes you think I need your help? if you don't even know how you're breathing yeah and i thought about it i was like wow you know what if i don't breathe for two minutes i die and i don't even know how i'm doing how am i gonna when i come back out of this how am i gonna get all upset with you know oh these people aren't listening to me they're doing this and i don't want people you know it's like who am i i don't even know how i'm breathing and the and the spirit said to me it's perfect just enjoy it and I was like, wow, you know, that changed my life right there. I was free. I didn't have to worry that, oh, I have to save the world. It's like, right. no, I, you, if you're going to manifest here, you know, do the best you can. But like, if you don't know how you're breathing, then don't presume that you have the answers. Just accept that this is a total miracle and wake up with joy and, you know, just accept how miraculous this situation is. Yes. So I want that for everybody. I want everybody to have that experience. That's why when I came back, I was like, I got to put this into, you know, get the movie out and I have to, you know, make my life about sharing this because I want everybody to have that because, you know, it scares me that people are out in the world 
on the surface level, not having this experience, not getting that kind of feedback and that kind of support from the universe. I just imagine how scary that is. Yes. And so if we have these natural catalysts that, you know, if you believe in God, then, you know, God put these things here for a reason. So what's the reason? It's not to call them bad or negative or drugs or it's like, no, God put this energy here for us to experience in a positive way with the right intent and if right. you do that then these are you know phenomenal experiences to be having exactly. um, these are you know what if god's all knowing when wouldn't it make sense that god would have put something here to help us to tap into spirituality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so, and for me, how I look at life now is all from spiritual perspective. I know, like, you, I like what you said, our virtuality suits. I sometimes mm. call this a space suit. And I know yeah. I have this space suit. I have this body, just like I have a car. No yes. different. My space suit is a vehicle to get around in this 3D dimension. But I am not, just like I'm not my car. I'm not my body. I'm a yes. divine being of light. We're all divine being of light. And we're not separate from God. Just yes. like we're not separate from each other and not separate from earth and the trees and the plants. We're not separate from nature. We're not separate from God. So a lot of times we'll ask, like, why does God do this? When, we're, when we should be asking, why are we doing it? Because actually, from a higher perspective, it's us. It's only one. Yes. It's yes. only God. I say, my term for God is all that is. There is nothing mm. outside of God. So I look yes. at it that way. And so um, we, quote, unquote, label things bad and good. And we say, why yes. do bad things happen? Not understanding from our limited human perspective that our lower self perspective, that something bad is happening. But from our higher perspective, our God self knows we planned it that way. We created yes. it that way. Exactly in perfect divine timing and order for a reason. I believe we planned all of our challenges to help wake us up. So yes. we have a challenge. That's like you had a challenge. You had a crisis. And so you went looking. Yep. In surging, um, my son, my um, my son transitioned five years ago to spirit. He's 29 years old, and that six months after his transition is when spirit said, "Just do it," meaning start my podcast. And at that wow. time, I didn't even know what a podcast was. I just, and I called it internet radio. But six wow. months after my son, so that challenge, you know, that challenge was to help me to do this. I know there is no su such thing as death. I know my son is with me. I have physical evidence that he's with me. I have his voice from spirit and images of him from spirit. And yes. and so, and he's the co-host of the show. So he's with wow. us right now. Nice. So it's just that when we look at things, I'm me personally, I always look at everything that happens from a spiritual perspective and know that it's happening in perfect divine timing. And I don't label it bad or good. I, I stay neutral. It's not what happens, but how you respond yes. to what happens. So uh, true. So true. Well, one of the takeaways for me from this whole ayahuasca experience and doing the reality of truth is, you know, I said, this is when, you know, several hours after we had drank the ayahuasca, and it was incredible because there was 13 of us, including the shaman and his assistant. Mm -hmm. And after several hours of having this incredible experience, we all came out of it in the exact same moment. Wow. It was like the, the ayahuasca energy just like left the room. Wow. And we were all like looked around and we were like, did you just come out? I can't, no, there's no way. Like we just were like dumbfounded. And then I just started, I, to, I replayed what happened in my head and I just started laughing and I was like, oh my God, I just got the whole human cosmic joke. You know, we have God with the white beard and Muhammad and Buddha and Jesus, all these men. And I was with God and it was a woman. Uh -huh. and, I remember you and said that. Yeah. I, yeah. And I was like, wow, well, like, you know, God's at least 50% feminine creative energy. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I thought about, wow, you know, the whole paradigm of religion and society of this matriarchal or, or this patriarchal society we're in, yes. it's, it's upside down. 
It's like yeah. every time I hear somebody now say, he, the father, him, and I'm just like, no. You know, yeah. your basic thing, just like you don't know how you're breathing even. Yes. Go ahead. Tell me how, you, how it is you're breathing. Go ahead. If you can tell me that right. then, and how you're growing your hair, then I'll, I will listen to you. And nobody right. knows. No one understands. Right. And so when, when a society, you know, tries to make things convenient by making something the father, it can disrupt every institution, every relationship you have because you're out of touch with some aspect of yourself or some aspect of nature that, you know, you need to be in touch with, especially in, you know, the times that we're living in right now where there's so much uncertainty, so much unknown. Everybody's trying to go, oh, what do I do? How do I fix this? And it's like, you don't know how you're breathing. Don't yeah. understand yourself. Mm-hmm. And when you understand yourself, then that'll be enough. You right. know, and if you radiate that direct experience, that's what you can bring to the world. You can't change somebody's mind, really. You can't change their lack of knowledge. And all you can do is get in touch with yourself, understand what frequency vibration is your frequency vibration, mm-hmm. and then radiate at that and let that be what you're doing. But don't try to fix the world it's not for you to fix you well, don't have even a, a clue about what you're doing here well when you when when you look at everything as just one just one thing that it's all perfect so mm-hmm. i love the yin yang symbol because it's half black half white equally yes. so the shadow side and the light is equal and it's yes. all one and that's yes. God, that's the perfect symbol of God. All that is. So yes. when you when we actually realize that everybody on the planet is exactly is a divine aspect of God. All that is a holographic aspect. Meaning, Rumi's quote is, "You're not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. Each of yes. us, each of us is all of God in a drop. Not a piece of yes. God." but all of God creating our reality and, and collectively yeah. creating this reality. So it's truly all in divine because it's God experiencing all of life. He wants to experience everything, everything we label good or bad. He wants to just experience it all. And it's yeah. just a play. It's just an illusion. The only thing that's real is how we feel and respond to it. Yeah. So when we understand that there's nothing separate from God, all that is, no person, no tree, no plant, no, no animal, we're all one and it's mm. no separation. And when we understand that, and it's, see, it, to me, it is such a, a universal and simple truth. And it's everywhere you look so in science and spirituality mm-hmm. at the core of all religions is mm-hmm. one is but i feel like these different religions that say well my religion is right your religion that's just that creates separation yeah when god is about unifying us all as one letting us know that it's all good it's how we respond to it that affects yes. how, you know how we go through each moment each yeah which now and, and now is all there is Power, yes. One of my favorite books by Eckhart Tolle is, yes. is, is all there is, is the now. And when yeah. we understand and in that now moment. I think like one of the most beneficial things about these catalysts is that they put you into that present moment awareness Yes, where everything is one, but it's also, there's no future and there's no past. You're just in that present moment. And that's how you, can live a thousand lifetimes in there. That's how you can look at things from a third party perspective. Yes. And, you know, what happened to me was when I came back from uh, do, making the movie and having mm-hmm. those experiences, I kept wanting everybody to go down and sit with a shaman. And <laughs> some of the people that needed it the most, they were like, I can't do that, Zappy. Uh, my family will put me in a mental institution if I tell them I'm going to go you know, down to the jungle and sit with a shaman. It's just not going to happen. So I kept thinking, oh, I got to find a Western medicine approach to getting into present moment awareness. And at that point, about four years ago, I was introduced to a catalyst called ketamine. And ketamine is an FDA approved anesthetic 
-hmm. It's the number one anesthesia that they use on children. Oral surgeons use to do oral surgery on children and infants because it's very fast acting and it's very safe. It doesn't affect your breathing or anything. And it turns out that the ketamine is actually a crystal. So what they do is they put a couple of salts and minerals together and it forms this ketamine crystal. Okay. And they take that crystal and they put it into some saline so that it's, you know, absorbable. And what was happening was they were using it in, in the battlefield when they were having to do amputations and things. And what would happen is the guy would, you know, they would use it as an anesthetic. They amputate the guy's arms or legs or something. And then the next day the guy would be in the infirmary and he would crack a joke. Okay. And they were like, what's going on here? Like this guy hasn't cracked a joke in two years and he just got his arms cut off. Like, why is he joking around? What, what's going on? And they realized that there was something within the ketamine. And then Yale university did a study, big study, um, that basically showed that if you give somebody not a high dose where they, uh, are, you know, are put out for surgery, but if you give them a low dose over a 45 minute period that it can break even treatment resistant depression Mm. and it can do it in 45 minutes. Wow! And I was like, wow, how is that even possible? I'm going to have to go try this. And I, I, I tried it. The Uh protocol for treatment resistant depression where no other medication has worked, nothing works, uh, is to do six ketamine IV infusions or intramuscular shots over like a two week period. And what happens is, yeah, the ketamine, (laughs) when it metabolizes, it builds up neural pathways in your brain. Okay. So it's actually building new gray matter in your brain uh, around your trauma and your depression. Wow. Now, when you said that, I don't know, have you ever heard of Dr. Joe? uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I lost you for a sec. Okay. Are you back? Uh, Yeah. You see me? I see you. Okay. I see you. Yeah. I I don't know what I hit. No, that's okay. okay. What when you just said what you just said about the neural pathways, you made me think of Dr. Joe Dispenza. Are you yeah. familiar with his yes, work? Yes, I am. Yes, yes, yes. So also, like I, I hear what you're saying there, but also one of the things I advocate on this show is for people to go within. Like I know with breath work, you can actually um, by going within, quieting the mind and doing certain breath work and doing certain things naturally, you can yeah. get also that same, same effect. You can, I would say that, you know, maybe a thousand years ago, that was really true. You know, you could sit down in nature and use a breathing technique or meditate and, you know, be there. But like in our modern society, we're being bombarded with yes. media and social media and advertising and propaganda like all this stuff is just hitting you maybe you came back from iraq yes. maybe you were sexually assaulted and you can't just sit down and meditate or breathe it's just too difficult okay, and so the, these catalysts are meant to like smash you through okay. and then you're in a place where you could meditate you could yes. breathe and you know have access to that i and get so, you yeah so this yeah. is um this is the you know Cleveland Clinic called Ketamine for Depression, a top ten medical breakthrough. Okay. And it was the only uh, the only mental health thing on the list, which means this is the biggest breakthrough in mental health in two hundred years that we've ever awesome. had. Awesome. And uh, what happens with the ketamine is it's a frequency. You know, when you mm-hmm. take when you get the IV or something, you feel this frequency happen of the ketamine, and it basically puts you into that present moment awareness state and you stay there you know for 35 40 minutes you're in that present moment no future no past and i've noticed that you know even people who meditate for 30 years they're trying to get to that spot right i get i got there in every time in five minutes yeah so for society itself to you know i think a lot of people they never get into that present moment awareness they never are able to just you know, take a step back and quiet the mind and all these techniques, you know, they're beautiful meditation, breathing. They want you to quiet the mind, but you know, you just came back from Iraq and you saw what you saw. You can't quiet your mind. Yeah. You're going to need a catalyst to just smash you through that. Yes. Um, So that's number one. Number two, the science on the ketamine says that when it metabolizes, actually, let me me give you one more data point. They say you have uh, an area of your brain called the default mode network. 
Okay. And it's an ancient area of the brain. And mm -hmm. you have a, a mechanism in there called your lateral habanula. Okay. And that lateral habanula is recording all the stress that's ever happened to you in your whole life. Yes. When it gets to a tipping point, it goes into a different brain state, which is called burst mode. And okay. when it goes into burst mode, it cuts off all your dopamine production. And your dopamine is basically the source of your happiness. Yes. It's the source of your motivation to do anything. So yes. when you don't have it, you know, you're, you're miserable. You want to, you know, you might as well kill yourself. You're just mm -hmm. no reward for anything. Right. And the ketamine, the first time you do it, it takes the brain out of burst mode and mm -hmm. you start to immediately get your dopamine back. Wow. So, okay. wow. Like oh, this is why, you yes. know, ketamine is being shown to be over 70% effective. Wow. So that's yeah, awesome. that is, awesome. it's amazing. And, and that you, present moment awareness, that experience alone makes yes. it worth it. But when you grow, you know, neural pathways around trauma and depression that you have, or maybe some hereditary, hereditary loop yes. that you're yes. putting everything yes. filtered and, through. And, and that as human beings, we do get, we get stuck in a loop. I've had people tell me, Several people tell me they can't meditate. You know, they try, they just can't. So I understand. And, and like you, we, we do need, that's something great for people that need to, to get there, you know, to experience that. And then they can, grad, it can gradually start to do something on their own, like meditation and breath work. But yeah. I understand yeah. what you're saying. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm, and I find that it's like a triage. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And I've always, I've, I've heard of uh, a ayahuasca for many years, and I've always wanted to experience it. And I know with a shaman in, you know, under the right settings that you have experienced it, but I've just never had the opportunity to, yeah. to do that. But one day I hope to too. Yeah, to I that hope that for you too, because, you know, it's kind of like when you realize everything's energy, you know, let's say you're even using essential oils you know so yes. you put some essential oils on your wrist and it goes those, that energy goes into your body and your bloodstream and you know you're metabolizing that you're synthesizing that with your energy so yes. it's not any different than you know taking echinacea or something yes. like that you're just putting an energy to your energy and yes. some of these you know um you know, in our modern society, I think, you know, it's nature's very intelligent. It knows that people are suffering from mental health. They're mm -hmm. suffering diseases that were unknown before. And so nature's bringing out these catalysts, right. these energies for us to, you know, re bring our frequency back to our original frequency before we were, you know, terrorized and, you know, told by our school and our institutions, like, this is good. This is bad. Don't do that. You know, and yes. when you get back to your own frequency, then when you go out into the world and somebody says, hey, try this thing, and you go, mm, you know what, it doesn't mm. really resonate with me. I think I'm it's, not going to do it. And you have that inner, you know, inner feeling. knowing. That yeah. inner knowing, yes. It's so yes. important. I think a lot of kids these days, they don't have that. They're just, mm. you know, going by what they're being told. Oh, um, exactly. And we have to get back to being able to understand our own energy. And I, I wish everybody could just meditate and breathe. That would be fantastic. Yes. But I, yes. I know the trauma that people are yes. going through. And, and right now, it seems we need a catalyst. And, yes. you know, so one thing that's really interesting about ketamine, uh, my partner in the, in the, I want to tell you about an upcoming documentary that we're doing with Lamar Odom, the basketball oh. player, okay. Kardashian. Um, okay. where we gave him a series of ketamine treatments okay. because he had never gone inside. He had been okay. told, you know, these are like white people drugs. Like, you know, don't do it. <laughs> if you go crazy, you have a bad experience. <laughs> yes. He, he's like, you know, you're, you, they could shoot you. The police could shoot you. You could uh, put in a I, mental I, institution. I, I hold that term white people drugs. Is like, yeah. Drug is a drug. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I understood. We have, like, a yeah. cultural bias in this country where, you know, if, if, let's say, a white kid takes some, you know, some catalyst and they freak out, well, you know, their parent, they're going to go to therapy and their whole community is going to go, oh, we're behind you. But if yeah. you're an African-American kid and you do and you freak out, you know, you really could get shot or be in a mental institution. So yeah. it, I was like, wow, we got to come up with some safe zones where – this is understood to be a major catalyst, a major experience that, you know, yeah. regardless of race, regardless yes. of ethnic, you know, our socioeconomics, 
this is a place that we have to treat people all the same. Right. And right, we have right. to fix that. And I think, yes. you know, for us, Lamar is like the perfect poster person for that because he'd never gone inside. He had okay. always, you know, tried to get, um, you know, happiness from outside. Outside. He, well, that's yeah. that's the problem with the world. That's the problem with humanity. We we don't realize that it is in, internal. That happiness, <coughs> joy, peace, love, everything is within you, and yeah. we're looking for it where it's not. It's not on the yeah. out. The outer world is truly an illusion. The outer yeah. world is virtual reality. What the only thing that's real is what's inside. That's yes. the inner, and the inner is just creating this outer illusion. So it's yes. yeah, so when we, it's when we yeah. well said. It's like you know, and you know, we wanted Warren and I, my business partner in the ketamine and in this Lamar movie, we wanted to show that when somebody goes inside and has yes. that experience, that that can correct a lot of things within their life number yes. one. And yes. then once we kind of stabilized Lamar and he had done enough of these ketamine treatments that he had kind of come back to his own frequency, I yes. said, look, Lamar, I'd like to bring you down to Mexico and have you do an Ibogaine treatment, okay. which is, uh, that's the medicine and the reality of truth that that guy, Jerry did who oh, wound yes. up opening the plant medicine center yes. uh, in Costa Rica. Yes. It's, you know, known to be able to break a heroin addiction in 12 yes. hours, a meth yes. addiction. And yes. uh, it's an African root, mm -hmm. which uh, comes traditionally from Gabon. There's a religion there called the Bwiti that use this uh, African root to connect with their ancestors. It's an ancestor-based yes. religion. Yes. And uh, I said to Lamar, you know, I was like, you're an African-American guy. This is an African root. Like you're probably supposed to be taking this. You've just been cut off from it culturally, you know, for hundreds of years. Right. I think given your addiction, you know, profile, you need to come with me down to Mexico, do an yes. Ibogaine journey. And it's going to do a mental reboot mm -hmm. on you. And it's also going to do a physical reboot on you. Those are the right. two core components of this Ibogaine experience. Right. And of course it happened. It, you know, he, after about uh, 48 hours after we, he had taken the Ibogaine, he said he felt so good mentally and physically that despite the fact that when he was in a coma, he had had um, 12 strokes, six heart attacks, mm. liver damage, kidney wow. failure, uh, he wasn't really even supposed to walk properly again, that he said in the van on the way back from Mexico to, to LA, he yeah. said, I feel so good. He goes, I think I can make a comeback in professional basketball. Wow. And, and we were all like, wow, like really? Um, you know, and his trainer, his bodyguard was with us and yeah. he's a good friend of his. And he was like, ah, take it easy, Lamar. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you know, you'd have to work out four hours a day. Yeah. You can't be smoking marijuana. And Lamar was like, I know what I got to do. I've done it before. I'm going to do it again. Right. And we were all like, wow, like this guy's really, here, don't go down there yet, Warren. Uh, I'm just on this thing. I think it'll cut off. Um, so, you know, for somebody to have that level of a turnaround, then four months yeah. later, he played professional basketball in a tournament in Dubai. Wow. Uh, and yeah. And it was incredible. He brought his father to do ketamine, who's been on methadone for decades. Okay. Uh, you know, he brought his family, his ex-wife and his kids to do yes. ketamine. They reconnected in a very yes. deep and real way now. Wow. And, you know, to see that transformation, um, it, was, it was so beautiful. And, yeah. and he's such a, a, a beautiful person. He's yes. got a great sense of humor. And, you know, he says at the end of the movie, he's like, you know, he's like, that ketamine took away my fear, my mm -hmm. fear of death, my fear of everything. He's like, I'm not even supposed to be alive right now. He's like, so when I challenged myself to go play basketball, I thought, well, you know, I don't, I can, even if I fail, I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be dead. So what do I care? I'm just going to go for it. Right. And he's like taking that fear of death away and was total empowerment for him wow. and uh we can't wait for the movie to come out we're we're out uh you know talking to all the distributors now about where it's going to run name? what's the name it's of called, it it's called lamar odom reborn wow yeah I can't wait and he, to see it. he even has an experience in the ibogaine which is a very intense experience 
he had an experience where uh, Kobe Bryant, and this was, you know, about a year ago that he did it, where yeah. in the most intense part, Kobe Bryant came to him in that. And wow. he manned up in that. And he said, okay, yeah, this is like fourth quarter. Kobe yeah. Bryant, I'm going to get through this. All right, I can do this. Wow. And he got through it. And, you know, it's just, it's so beautiful to see. That's what I love about these catalysts is, you yes. know, if you work with somebody and you do talk therapy or yes. you do a weight loss program, it's going to take six months, a year, two right. years to get some results. Exactly. This is like instantaneous. Really yes. Flip the switch. Yes. And, and I love uh, the... I love the fact that you say it's something you do. It gets you there instantaneously, but it's not something that you have to stay on, that you do for life. You, it gets right. you to the point where you can do other modalities, more, you know, more natural modalities. It's kind of gets you there quick. And a, a lot yeah. of people, a lot of people do need that. So, yeah. And, yeah. you know, we, at, we, what we did was we, uh, we, um, we gave uh, Lamar some daily practices. We worked on meditation, breathing, um, you know, gave him CBD to mm -hmm. work into his system. So it's kind of like a formula that we used. And, you know, these days I'm going by a sort of, you know, a title of like a psychedelic concierge is what I've really become. Okay. And okay. what that means to me is that, you know, like a concierge at a hotel, you go up, you know, you sit, you go to the concierge and say, oh, where should we go for dinner tonight near the hotel? And right. he says, oh, well, what do you, you know, what kind of food do you like? Would you like there to be music? You, right. you want a romantic place? Would you like to meet people? Do you like wine? They ask all these questions and they go, okay, this is what you need. This is okay. where you should go. And okay. so people come to me and, and I assess, you know, what's their trauma? What yes. are the things that they need? Um, what healing do they need? And in doing that, I come up with this formula for them, which in the Lamar case was to do ketamine, mm -hmm. then to do plant medicine, which was CBD and uh -huh. then ibogaine, and then okay. the daily practice of the meditation, the breathing, that yes. thing that can, you know, tap you back into that experience because the ibogaine, it's like a one-time thing. It's like, yes. you know, that you do one time. The right. ketamine, you know, is like a six treatment protocol to get okay. enough brain, you know, yes. neural pathways built. And then yes. maybe you come back and do it a couple times a year or something like that. A okay. booster one time if you need it. Yes, um, I got you. Mm -hmm. But what, yeah. what I wanted to tell you is uh, my partner, Warren, and I, we started something, a nonprofit called the Ketamine Fund. Okay. And the Ketamine Fund is dedicated to uh, basically bringing suicide rates down by 75% using Amazing. ketamine. Yeah. Amazing. The number one side effect of ketamine is it breaks suicidal ideation. Mm. And people go, well, how is that even possible? But what happens is, you know, usually when you're suicidal, you, you think to yourself, I'm either going to do this or I kill myself. I have no choice. I either keep doing this or I can't. And that's your two choices. And when you do the ketamine yes. and you're put into this present moment awareness, now you, you know, have that space to sit back and, and, and look at things. But secondly, all of a sudden you're given like all these other option sets. So instead of two options, now you see you have 12 options and you say, wait a minute, I like doing that. And then if I do that, that could lead to that. And mm -hmm. I think I might do that, which is different. And all it of a sudden you got all these options. Yeah, yeah, it opens up your possibilities. It doesn't, like you said, when people are suicidal, it's, it's you, you're narrow, you're tunnel vision. But when you, when you open up, it's like, wait a second. I have that possibility. I have that possibility. There's all, and there's infinite, it's truly yeah. infinite possibilities. That's what actually quantum physics even talks about. In every now moment, there's infinite possibilities yes. right there for you. Yes. To so yeah. It's beautiful. So yeah, so we're, we just started to give, we donated uh, 400 treatments to veterans suffering from PTSD recently. Awesome. And we're, it's like a mini clinical trial. We took uh -huh. these people who were, uh, you know, on 20 different medications from the VA, uh, suicidal, homicidal. Yes. We gave him the ketamine treatments. One guy was on 22 medications. He's now on zero medications. Awesome. He just comes and does his, you know, regular ketamine booster treatment every month. He does it. And okay. it's such a beautiful thing. So, you know, I want to encourage anybody to, you know, kind of look into this. But when yes. the Lamar movie comes out, 
because you get to see Lamar do the experience, you get to see him after, you get to see him in the days later, you get to see how it affected him long term. That yes. I think, you know, we expect like an exponential, you know, um, right. rush to ketamine because yes. it has such healing properties. And, and it's, you know, you walk into a Western doctor's office, 45 minutes, 15 minutes later, you can go back home, take care of your kids, you mm -hmm. know, uh, yes. go get a smoothie. It's not like, you know, going to the jungle and, you know, yes. for a week after that, you're like, wow, I got to <laughs> integrate this back into my life. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I get you. I get the ketamine, you. it's like, it's so easy. Yes. And uh, it's a really beautiful thing. I think it's going to save you know, it's going to yes. lower the suicide rate. It's going to save the veterans administration yes. and it's pro it's going to change society in a big way. So yes. Yes. I'm thrilled to be, uh, you know, to have been shown it and to be able to share it. It really feels like good. Yes. Thank you. And please let our listeners know how they can find you and All right. again, share with them where they can find the, the movie, the, uh, right. so the first the movie. Okay. Right. So, okay. So, a couple ways to look up uh, what I'm up to. You can go to zappy.com, Z-A-P-P-Y.com. Okay. Um, you can also go to Odom Reborn, which will okay. give you some information on, on the movie that's coming, odomreborn.com. Awesome. And then you can also check out the ketaminefund.org. Okay. And the um, ketaminefund.org it has videos of some of these veterans that have gone through the process. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, just incredible videos. And, um, yeah, that's how to stay in touch with me. And, um, awesome. Awesome. I just really appreciate you having me today and I love your energy. It's just oh. very, you know, it's just like, just kind of like makes the conversation real easy and, uh, and you have your own knowledge base that you're bringing. So it's, it's really nice. Thank you so much. I yeah. love you. Like I said, this is a passion of mine. I, I was inspired directly from spirit to launch my show five years ago after my son's transition. And it just, I feel like I, I, that's what I was put here to do. So I'm just yes. following my passion. Yes. I love it. All thank right. you so you much. Too. Thank you so I'll much. I'll see you soon. Yes. All you right. have thank a wonderful you. day. Thanks again. You and we're going to keep in touch. Yes. Okay. All bye right. Bye-bye. Hi, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Zappy. Really looking forward to his new documentary that's coming out soon. I wanted to invite you if you're interested in having a free mentoring session with me. All you would need to do is go to my website, awaketoonenessradio.org, and let me know if you're interested in a free mentoring session. Um, again, remember, it's wake number two, oneness radio.org. I'm also hosting on there a monthly Zoom meeting where we'll be meeting this month and on Thursday, March 26 at 8 p.m. Eastern. If you're interested in joining us in a Zoom gather gathering, um, just send me your email and I will send you the link to that Zoom meeting. I would like, like to see you, hope to see you there. Um, also, on my website, you can find free online events. This month, there are six listed, and all you have to do is go to my website. You'll see free online events. Click on it, and you will see the list of six free online events that you can sign up for. Um, I'm also um, asking if you are interested in helping to support the show we, I do have a donation button, and if you're interested in pledging a dollar or five dollars a month to help support the show, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, also, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you guys. Love you all. Namaste. Have a wonderful day.